So, the next uh, three examples uh, that we are going to look at uh, are all uh, steady flow applications and the uh, last example that we will look at involves a uh, heat engine executing a cyclic process. Okay. So, the first example here uh, reads like this, air is compressed steadily in an 8 kilowatt compressor from ambient condition to 650 kPa and 187 degree Celsius. The mass flow rate is uh, given to be 2.1 kg per minute. Neglecting the changes in Ke uh, kinetic and potential energies determine the second law efficiency of the compressor. Okay. So, uh, basically we have a, a situation like this. So, we have a compressor, air enters at uh, ambient condition, then it is compressed to 650 kPa, 187 degree Celsius. So, we apply um, uh, steady flow energy equation uh, to the compressor and we make use of the fact that uh, air um, uh, is an ideal gas and calorically perfect. So, we simply write uh, H1 minus H2 as uh, Cp times T1 minus T2. Uh, if we uh, plug in the num uh, numbers, we uh, get Q dot to be minus 2.2711 kilowatts. Okay. Remember, the power of the compressor is given to be 8 kilowatts. So, Wx dot is actually minus 8. You need to keep that in mind. So, Q dot is known now and uh, the rate of entropy generation and so, exergy destruction may be evaluated like this. So, this is sigma dot. So, basically it is m dot times s2 minus s1 plus q dot surroundings divided by uh, t naught. And um, you may recall that q dot surrounding uh, is equal to minus uh, q naught and s2 minus s1 here may be evaluated using the uh, TDS relations because it is an uh, ideal gas. So, if you go ahead with this, you get uh, the lost work. Uh, expression for lost work reads like this and the lost work itself comes out to be 1.2102 kilowatts. So, now uh, we can write the um, uh, second law efficiency of the compressor as absolute value of Wx dot reversible divided by uh, the absolute value of Wx dot. Remember, this is a power absorbing device. Okay? So, which means that So, uh, the lost work is added to reversible work. The um, uh, actual work is more than the reversible work. So, the uh, lost work is added to the reversible work to get the actual work. Okay? So, um, we may simplify this expression and evaluate the second law efficiency of the compressor as 85 percent. Okay, so, notice that here uh, to get around the difficulty involving the negative sign for Wx dot, we have used absolute values and we have um, uh, treated lost work as what it is. Okay? So, lost work in this case adds to the uh, reversible work to arrive at the actual work. Okay? So, the actual work is more than the reversible work because it is a power consuming device. The next example uh, involves a, a steam turbine. So, here we have So, steam enters the turbine steadily at 3 ampere 440 degree Celsius. So, we know that it is superheated based on the property values that are given at a rate of 8 kg per second and exits at 0 0.35 ampere and 160 degree Celsius. So, again we know that uh, since pressure and temperature are given, it is uh, superheated at the exit also. Heat is lost to the surroundings at a rate of 500 kilowatts. kilowatts. So, let us say. So, heat is lost to the surroundings at a rate of 500 kilowatts. Ke and Pe changes are negligible. Determine the actual power output, maximum possible power output and the second law efficiency. Okay? So, we can directly retrieve the values for specific enthalpy and specific entropy at the inlet and exit from the superheated table. And if we apply steady flow energy equation to the turbine, uh, we may get the uh, actual power output as 3815.2 kilowatts. This is the 
actual power output. Now, if we add the lost work to this, we get the maximum uh, possible work or the reversible work, maximum possible power output or reversible uh, power output. So, the rate of exergy destruction may be evaluated like this. So, remember uh, exergy destruction is nothing but T0 times sigma dot. So, sigma dot itself is equal to m dot times S2 minus S1 plus Q dot surrounding over T naught and Q dot surrounding is minus uh, Q naught. So, if you um, uh, plug in the values, we get the uh, rate of exergy destruction to be 679.5152 kilowatts. So, we add this uh, rate of exergy destruction which is also lost work to W x dot actual to arrive at the maximum possible work or maximum possible power that we could have obtained from the turbine and that comes out to be 4494.72. Since this is a power producing device, the uh, second law efficiency is simply W x dot actual divided by W x dot maximum and the efficiency of the uh, turbine second law efficiency comes out to be 85 percent or so which is quite high. 85 percent second law efficiency is usually considered to be high, but typical of uh, turbines. The next example that we will look at involves a uh, feed water heater or mixing chamber. So, steam at 1 m power 300 degree Celsius. So, this is superheated steam enters at inlet 1 and saturated liquid water at 10 kilo Pascal whose pressure has been raised uh, to isentropically to 1 mega Pascal enters the uh, heater. Okay. So, steam at 1 mega Pascal and saturated liquid water whose temperature uh, whose pressure has been raised to 1 ampere um, enters the enter the heater. Heat is lost to the ambient at the rate of uh, I am sorry, heat loss to the ambient occurs at the rate of 100 kilowatts. If saturated liquid at 1 ampere is to exit the heater, determine the required mass flow rate of steam for every unit mass flow rate of the exiting stream. So, that means uh, M3 dot is 1 kg per second. So, we are asked to determine the amount of uh, I am sorry, the mass flow rate of steam that is required to accomplish the given uh, conditions. Remember, the condition is that saturated liquid at 1 ampere should leave the heater. So, we adjust the mass flow rate of steam until we are able to accomplish that. So, basically we assume the mass flow rate of steam to be x kg per second. So, this mass flow rate is then 1 minus x kg per second because this is at the, at the exit the mass flow rate is 1 kg per second. Uh, we are asked to calculate the uh, rate of exergy destruction and the second law efficiency of the feed water heater or mixing chamber. Okay. In the next module where we are going to discuss um, uh, Rankine cycle, uh, you will learn this is uh, usually referred to as a feed water heater and not as a mixing chamber in the uh, in the next module. And this is a, although this is uh, irreversible, we know that mixing is highly irreversible, this device is still um, uh, very uh, very good device because it allows um, uh, stream to be heated uh, by mixing and not by adding heat to it directly. So, the, the water which comes in at a, um, uh, 1 ampere is actually heated until it leaves as uh, a saturated liquid at 1 ampere. So, that means it is being heated uh, uh, to that temperature without directly adding heat and that reduces the external irreversibility associated with the heat addition process and actually increases the uh, overall efficiency of the plant. We will see this uh, in the next module. Okay. So, for the superheated steam that comes in through inlet 1, we may retrieve the property values like this and at uh, state 3, we have um, uh, saturated liquid at 1 ampere. The state is given. So, uh, uh, we have HF, H3 equal to HF and S3 equal to SF at 1 ampere. Now, state 2 is a compressed liquid state 
and the temperature at state uh, 2 is not known. Okay. Usually what we do is we approximate h of uh, t comma p for a compressed liquid as u f of t plus p times v f of t, but the t is not known. Okay. So, here we have to resort to a slightly different tactic. Uh, we use the TDS relationship uh, and write uh, TDS equal to d h minus v d p. Okay. It is given that uh, the water uh, that is entering uh, at inlet uh, 2 is actually compressed isentropically from a pressure of 10 kilo Pascal to a pressure of 1 uh, mega Pascal. So, for that process we can uh, take ds to be equal to 0 and um, uh, dh then may be evaluated like this. So, H2 equal to HF at 10 kilo Pascal plus uh, VF of 10 kilo Pascal times 1000 minus 10. So, the uh, enthalpy of the liquid that is entering, compressed liquid that is entering at um, inlet 2 works out to 192.72 and S2 equal to SF because it is an isentropic process. So, S2 equal to SF at 10 kilo Pascal and that is 0.6489. We also need the um, uh, enthalpy or properties of the, uh, of the fluid at the reference state. Okay. So, at the reference state of 25 degrees Celsius and 100 kPa, it is a, um, uh, it's a compressed liquid. So, we can get H0 as uh, UF at 25 degrees Celsius plus this. So, that is equal to this and um, uh, we may also approximate S0 as SF at 25 degrees Celsius. So, now we have all the property values that we uh, require. So, I suggest that you review this uh, once more just to make sure that you are uh, you are comfortable with what we have done. Okay. So, basically uh, it is given that saturated liquid water at 10 kilo Pascal is compressed isentropically or its pressure is uh, increased isentropically in a pump. So, that is the process that the, um, uh, that the water has undergone before entering. Um, inlet 2. So, basically if you recall, uh, so uh, if I draw a TS diagram like this, let us say this is the isobar corresponding to 10 kilo Pascal and this is the isobar corresponding to 1 m power. Then the saturated liquid at uh, 10 k power is pumped in a pump from 10 k power to 1 m power and that is an isentropic process. So, this is state 2. Okay. So, we apply TDS relation to this process, to this process, the pumping process and we are able to calculate H2 and because it is an isentropic process, S2 is equal to uh, SF at uh, this state. So, that is what we have done. So, if we now apply steady flow energy equation to the feed water he heater, we get x to be equal to 0 0.2345. So, for every kilogram per second of a saturated liquid at 1 ampa that leaves the feed water heater, we need 0 0.2345 kg per second of steam. Okay. Now, specific exergy of the uh, outgoing stream psi 3 may be evaluated like this after substituting the values here. Psi 2 and Psi 1 may also be evaluated in this uh, in the same manner. So, the rate of exergy destruction is nothing but rate at which exergy comes in minus rate at which exergy leaves the feed water heater. Okay. So, this is the rate at which exergy comes in, this is the uh, Psi 3 is the rate at which exergy leaves the uh, control volume. So, the uh, rate of exergy destruction is 91.7135 kilowatts. Rate at which exergy enters, we already said that this is the rate at which exergy enters the uh, feed water heater. So, this uh, comes out to be 221.7 uh, kilowatts. Therefore, uh, we use the, uh, uh, the second law efficiency. This is not a work producing or a work absorbing device. So, you may recall that for such devices, uh, <coughs> we write the second law efficiency like this. So, rate at which or we wrote it like this, exergy uh, 
recovered divided by XRG supplied. So, rate at which XRG is recovered. So, rate at which XRG is recovered is nothing but XRG supplied minus rate at which XRG is uh, destroyed. So, this is equal to XRG supplied all on a rate basis uh, because this is a steady flow problem minus XRG destroyed. So, that the final expression for eta 2 becomes 1 minus uh, rate of XRG destruction divided by rate at which XRG is supplied and it comes out to be 58.6 percent. Now, as we said because it is a mixing chamber, its second law efficiency is poor, but in an overall sense because we are able to uh, heat a stream of water without directly supplying heat to it, the overall uh, efficiency of the cycle still improves as we will demonstrate in the next module. The last uh, example involves a cyclic process. So, here uh, we have a, a direct heat engine. So, we have uh, two reservoirs, one at uh, TC, we have a direct heat engine which receives an amount of heat QH from a high temperature reservoir, uh, rejects heat to a uh, low temperature reservoir at uh, TC. and we are asked to develop operates in a cycle and we are asked to develop an expression for the second law efficiency of the heat engine. So, the exergy recovered during uh, each cycle basically is, is this plus the exergy associated with QC. You may recall that uh, the exergy associated with QC may be written like this. Uh, please go back and review the, uh, uh, the discussion on exergy transfer arising from heat transfer and you should be able to uh, write the exergy associated with uh, heat rejection of uh, QC to a reservoir at TC works out to be something like this. Now, the exergy supplied to the cycle is the equivalent of uh, or is the exergy associated with uh, QH and that works out to QH times 1 minus T0 divided by TH. So, we know exergy supplied we know exergy recovered. So, second law efficiency uh, because it is a power producing cycle, we may write second law efficiency as exergy recovered divided by exergy supplied. And since the device operates in a cycle, W equal to QH minus QC. So, uh, these two cancel out and if you divide through by QH, we may uh, write this expression. Okay. So, here eta is the uh, actual efficiency of the cycle. So, eta is equal to and what we have done in the denominator is to multiply and divide by a Tc and then we have uh, rewritten Tc over Th by using the definition of the Carnot efficiency eta Carnot equal to 1 minus Tc over uh, Th. So, this is the efficiency of a Carnot engine operating between the same two reservoirs. So, by using that we have rewritten the expression like this. So, this is the second law efficiency of the cycle expressed in terms of the first law efficiency and the Carnot efficiency. Now, if heat is rejected to the ambient instead of uh, to the if heat is rejected to the ambient instead of to a reservoir at Tc, basically we said Tc equal to T naught, then we get the uh, second law efficiency of the cycle to be just eta over eta corno. Okay. Otherwise, if it is rejected to an intermediate uh, reservoir at a temperature higher than the ambient temperature, this is the uh, expression uh, that we get. So, you can see that the second law efficiency gives us more perspective on the performance of the cycle and insights on the operations of components because we can define second law efficiencies for individual components which are executing a non-cyclic process. It gives us insights on the performance of the uh, of individual devices, the uh, exergy destroyed and uh, this will allow us. So, when we have let us say uh, several designs for executing or accomplishing a certain process, this metric will allow us to make a comparative evaluation of these designs because they may be identical on a first law basis and 
which they will be usually. So, we need to uh, discriminate uh, against the poorer designs by using the second law efficiency. Okay. So, second law efficiency and the notion of exergy are thus very, very important in practical thermodynamic uh, applications. Okay. So, what we are uh, going to do in the next module is to discuss thermodynamic cycles. Uh, we will discuss uh, uh, three cycles. First one is the uh, Rankin cycle or steam power cycle. Next one is the air standard cycle. Third one is the vapor compression refrigeration cycle. Okay, which is a power absorbing cycle. Now, the, the Rankine cycle and the vapor compression refrigeration cycle have as we showed in the previous course, they are genuine heat engines because there is a fixed quantity of uh, mass of the working substance which executes the cyclic process throughout. Okay, so, whatever we have discussed, you know, so it uh, qualifies as a heat engine and the uh, discussion proceeds very uh, smoothly. Now, in the case of um, uh, cycles that utilize air as the working substance, typically air is drawn from the atmosphere and then after passing through the engine, the air is then exhausted back to the atmosphere or clean air is taken from the ambient and uh, usually uh, combustion products are let out of the engine into the atmosphere. So, the air does not actually execute a cyclic process. So, what we will sort of try to do is to idealize the process by saying that a certain quantity of air executes a, uh, a cyclic process just like in the case of Rankine cycle or vapor compression cycle and uh, we will we will treat this as an idealized form of the actual process. So, this will be a cyclic process although the actual process involved in a, a gas turbine engine or a spark ignition engine or a diesel engine is not a cyclic process, but this will give us some ideas on the performance of such devices.